five and one, five and one. I bet you're having fun. I know you're having fun. Well, enjoy it now. Yes, you should. Playoffs one and done. Yes, it's true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. As you look at what happened today in this Bears-Panthers game, and if you're a Bears fan and you have feelings of hope and optimism for this season, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, man, this defense stepped up and played really big today. And they did. They absolutely did. They continuously put this crappy offense into good positions. You know, the first touchdown of the game was scored very quickly because the Bears forced an immediate turnover, great interception by Gibson, and the Bears struggled to get it into the damn end zone. And it's like they were allergic to it. They're allergic to good offensive play calling. They're allergic to executing on that side of the ball. And we're used to the, those allergies, aren't we? This defense played very well today. Multiple turnovers forced, three of them as a matter of fact, including the one that ultimately clinched the game, the DeAndre Houston Carson interception. I don't know what the heck Teddy was throwing there. You know, the fumble, forced fumble by Mike off of Mike Davis. Like you look at this and you say, three, three total turnovers forced, four sacks, hold the Panthers well under 300 yards passing. Mike Davis. You know, matching up against this Bears defense, you're thinking, oh, this may be a little bit of a revenge game combined with the fact that the Bears hadn't been that good in recent weeks in terms of yards per carry allowed against opposing running backs. And they did work on him. They held him under 60 yards rushing. Like, he, he never really got off in this game. There was no real rhythm for this Panthers running game. There's no real consistent rhythm even for this Panthers offense. In some ways, it felt like you were watching a mirror image of each other. And the Bears just play a little bit better style of this mediocre, boring-ass football than the Carolina Panthers do. And that's exactly the way I look at it. But make no mistake about it. For those of you that want to believe that this defense is elite, then today is the type of game that you look at and you say, three turnovers forced, four sacks on Bridgewater, 16 points allowed. Like, that's an elite type of performance, especially on the road. And I have no choice but to give you that. It was an elite defensive performance today. It's nice to see a Khalil Mack doing big things. You know, so you can even overlook the things like the, the bad penalties called throughout the game. You could talk about, you know, what the hell are you doing on fourth down? The Panthers are deep in your territory. Yes, I understand, but they're clearly trying to draw you off at the hard count. And then you jump across and go into the neutral zone. Like, what the hell is going on here? The two, like this is where you get to the Pagano elements of the two penalties for 12 men on the field defensively on the same drive. Like in spite of all of that, the crappy coach in Chuck Pagano, the crappy offense, the horrible ass garbage ass play caller that is the head coach that is Matt Nagy. And yet and still this Bears defense found a way time after time in this game to make big plays happen, to make big stops. So even though you can, I can still be a little concerned about sometimes how they give up too many yards on some of these drives, and that really, really good teams are going to exploit that. You can't do that against Aaron Rodgers, or you know what's going to happen. Nonetheless, for a team like the Bears coming into today's game, to you know not be able to throw for even 200 yards passing, have Montgomery go under 60 yards rushing, the fact that they came out of this against a 3-2 and two team with a 23-16 victory to go to 5-1, you know, I'm sure it makes a lot of you happy. It doesn't me, though. Because here's the thing. is so many times over the years, we've seen the same formula of lame-ass, boring-ass, 1980s, 1970s-style Bears football. They play good or great defense, and then their offense is booty. And the thing is, is I can't even say, like, this reminds me of a John Shoop offense or this Ron Turner offense or anything like that at all. Because this team can't even run the damn ball. Like, you look at some of the, you know, situations around the goal line. Like, you give Montgomery two chances to get it in, and he can't get it in. Then you got a quarterback sneak with Foles. Like, it's just, my God. 
You know, that's where it comes down to the Jimmys and Joes aren't good enough, but it also comes down to the X's and O's aren't good enough. Like, if you watch this game today, it validates everything that you think about this team or have thought about this team heading into the season, if you're a rational thinking Bears fan. This defense has a lot of talent, and they will make some plays, and if they make some plays and force some turnovers, they will keep this team in the game. And then you have to hold on for dear life and pray to God that the offense doesn't screw it up. Because you don't trust the quarterback situation no matter who's behind center. They can't run the ball. Their offensive line stinks, both in run block, blocking and pass protection. They're equivalently crappy in both at this point. And you know that Matt Nagy, who seems to be a decent motivator of men, is a horrible play caller. Now, if you didn't know those things now through six games of this season, you know it to be true, for sure. Because you saw this play out today. Like, you look at Nick Foles, like Vilma, and he's not very good, mind you, by the way. I know sometimes it takes time for people to get good at their roles, but he's just not good right now. Um, he's in there talking about Foles is hot. Foles is hot. What in the blue hell are you talking about? Like you said that at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and he didn't even have 200 yards passing on the day. Like, what in the freaking hell are you talking about? And that's the thing with Foles that can be frustrating. Like, he'll make some really nice throws and some really, really big-time plays. And then he'll just throw one at somebody's feet. He'll miss a wide-open guy, a la Trubisky. Like, it's Mick Folsky is what you think you see sometimes. And then you look at, I think it was when they forced the fumble on Mike Davis. Like, here's the real opportunity. The Bears can pounce and put the Panthers out of their misery there in the third quarter. Let's score some damn points in the third quarter, which you ultimately finally did, but you didn't do it here because immediately Nick Foles proceeds to roll out like he's freaking far or some damn body or Rodgers and throws it up, intercepted, big freaking surprise. Like you can't do that. Like the Bears are incredibly fortunate and lucky right now. They are. You can say five and one is five and one, and that is absolutely true. Five and one is five and one. And when you look at where they're at, reality is they probably can make the playoffs this year. They can win 10 or 11 games. But they absolutely have no chance in the playoffs. Do not twist it. Do not get crazy here. Do not get delusional. Do you think they're going to beat somebody like Green Bay or Seattle in the playoffs? Or even the Rams at this point, based off the way they look so far this year? Not to mention some of those other kind of second-tier teams in the NFC. You really trust this team with a Nick Foles at the helm, with no running game, when they face off against better offenses in the playoffs. like And this, to me, is the nightmare of doomsday scenarios for the Chicago Bears organization. So I was trying to put the Jeff Jinx on him at the beginning of the year. I've been trying to put the Jeff Jinx on him all damn year. And maybe I need to really double down and start picking them to win every game, because that'll fix their asses real quickly. Because I know exactly where this is heading. This is heading down that 10 to 11, maybe 12 win path. They get in the playoffs, and then they lose in the first round. Then, because they made the playoffs twice in three years, Matt Nagy gets a contract extension. Ryan Pace gets a contract extension. Ted Phillips continues to be team president in perpetuity for reasons that are unbeknownst to me. And the same cycle of mediocrity of suck just continues for years and years to come. The reality is right now, though, is that when you're five and one, you got to start thinking about the playoffs. That's true. Now, for the Bears, you are going to find out a lot about this team in the next three weeks, because they got to go to Los Angeles to play the Rams on Monday night, then they come home to host the Saints, and then they got to go to Tennessee. Good luck with that. If the next after the next three games that the Bears are sitting six and three, you can maybe feel a little bit better about things. I don't think you should delude yourself too much on this five and one start. But if all of a sudden they go and those next three games they lose all of them, then they're five and four and there's all types of panic and pandemonium going about. And it will largely probably be because this offense absolutely sucks. I am so sick and tired of watching these mediocre, pathetic, pedestrian-ass offenses and being asked to accept this year after year after year. It's bad enough the Bears play the same type of pathetically predictable pattern of football that just bores the absolute brakes off of me. But they just can't score like big boys and girls, or big boys, whatever the hell you want to say. Like, that's unacceptable. Even today when you look at it, you say, okay, 
The first touchdown was a gift from the defense, and they still almost screwed that up. So let's say they didn't get the touchdown on third down, and they kick a field goal there. Now you're talking about their offense has scored 19 points. Not to mention other times that the Bears' defense put them in pretty good field goal position. Like, why can't this offense more consistently score more points? You went to Foles because he was supposed to be better. You've invested quite a bit on some of the weapons on the offensive side of the ball in terms of money, in terms of draft picks. You're supposed to be better. You're bringing Matt Nagy because he's from the Kansas City Andy Reid coaching tree and he's supposed to be some type of goddamn quarterback whisperer or some type of offensive play-calling guru genius even though he only play, called plays for half a season in Kansas City in 2017, whatever. And this is the type of pathetic-ass defense offense you get. Your feature back can't even get to 60 yards on the ground. And your quarterback can't even get to 200 yards through the air. Now, sure, this is cute sometimes within individual regular season games because you play a team like the Carolina Panthers, who's a lesser version of what you are, and you can still find a way to win. But the mere fact that with the way that defense played today, that this was even a game with less than two minutes to go, that the Panthers had the ball with a chance to drive score a touchdown, tie the game, or potentially get nuts, go for two to try and win it. It's absolutely, totally, fundamentally falls on the shoulders of Matt Nagy and the general manager, Ryan Pace. So this offense is absolutely pathetic, and I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of Bears fans sitting there and glossing over the fact that, yeah, this team is 5-1, and one, but what the hell substance is there behind it? How much more do you need to see to realize that Nagy doesn't know what the hell he's doing as a play caller? Like even late in the game, third down, run the goddamn ball. Either force the Panthers to take their last time out, or maybe, just maybe, you actually get the first down, and you know, the clock runs out. But instead, no, you got to get artsy-fartsy, cutesy-wootsy, incompletion, clock stop, punt to Carolina, and you'd be at least giving them a chance. And again, thank God you were facing the Panthers, not a legit good NFL offense. And thank God your defense can actually make some plays because this would be an entirely different situation. This is easily the best defensive performance for this Bears team this year. I think in terms of the circumstances, in terms of what they actually did, this is their best one. You could talk about bad penalty calls until you blew in the face, and there certainly were some in this game. I have no delusions of thinking otherwise or trying to pretend that that's not the case. But that shouldn't matter. Like, they should be light years better than the Panthers here. Even if it's on the road, you can say, well, now they're 3-0 on the road. Okay, cool. But the other two road wins came against the Lions and the Falcons. What the hell does that even mean? They're winning road games against scrub teams that they should be kicking their ass. And the other two that I mentioned, they had to have big fourth quarter miraculous comebacks. And here they had to hold on tight. And giving me that 2001 vibe. But not nearly as much fun as that 2001 season was. This just feels like it's dumb. Like, how in the hell does this team have such a talented defense and they can't even run the ball offensively? At least if you could run the ball offensively, that would be something. And you'd be a bigger threat and you would be somebody to take serious down the road. But everybody knows right now. They're just waiting for reality to catch up eventually, and it will. Whether it's in the next three weeks or some point in time down the road, it will. Because this team cannot hang with the big boys. And if you think they can hang with the big boys, you're insane. They can't run the ball. Their quarterbacks, whoever it is, are mediocre at best. And their defense has to play absolute elite lights out football all the time to do that, to keep them in the game. And they've got the handicap of having Chuck Pagano as their defensive coordinator. So they're not going to do that. So celebrate this one if you must. Five and one is five and one. And hey, you're embarrassing. You've also watched enough really bad, crappy football over the years. So I give you this. Like you want to enjoy the delusion of this being something worthwhile. But it's not. Don't kid yourself. You know you're only setting yourself up for heartbreak later this year. But when, all's, when it all comes to pass, these next three weeks at Los Angeles, home against New Orleans, at Tennessee, you're going to find out a lot about this football team and find out what their real truth is and whether or not they can actually play with some of the big boys in the NFL.